Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to uh, talk briefly about uh, this concept called geohash. So can I have a raise of hands? Like, how many of you already know about it, or at least have heard about this stuff? Okay. Um, uh, so in like, if I can have a Twitter pitch thoughts for geohash, it would be just this line: like, you encode the latitude longitude system into a string. That's what geohashing is all about. So, uh, what's the plan today? We'll just uh, briefly uh, look at what Geohash is, why do we need such, such a system, uh, the common implementation of Geohash using the geohash.org web service, how does it work, and uh, also uh, how do we do the nearby and uh, zooming properties, also the nearby searches. And also I will show a small demo that I mashed up yesterday for the And uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Sandeep. I co-founded this company called Ideophone with uh, Sundar and Anand. Both of them are here. We have built a couple of mobile applications for people who commute uh, and travel. So, uh, going into uh, what is Geohash. So, Geohash is a simple way of encoding a latitude longitude into a string. So, it's a compact string encoding of geographic coordinates. Say, for example, if I could just say, like, uh, if I just ask, like, uh, what is the lat long of Bangalore, I'm sure most of us don't really know what the value is. Instead, if I can just say, like, Bangalore, the geohash is TDR1, that's it. Uh, Domlur is, like, TDR1, WX. So it's like a hierarchical system that follows uh, grids. I mean, the entire latitude of longitude is divided into rectangular grids. And uh, you keep, uh, so as long as the the string length keeps increasing, the precision keeps going deeper. So it's available in public domain and invented by Gustavo Niemar. <clears throat> so why do we need it when we have a lot long? Uh, the basic problem that most of the speakers were telling in the morning that you, we usually have big addresses, like for this Katanama uh, event, we had such a big address, it's not standard. And the latitude and longitude, it's very difficult to make sense of unless you have a map. Instead, the mail could have just said that the venue is this particular string, which is like 8 or 9. So as I keep increasing the string length, uh, the accuracy increases and you can pinpoint to that point. And uh, you can also access it via the web service, which I'll come to later. So it subdivides space into buckets of grid shape, rectangular in shape. So it doesn't really mean that you can reach at a point level. It just means that the, a particular given point, when we say that like Bangalore is TDR1, it just means that that particular lat long is within that boundary, that's all it. It's not like a point. And it's a hierarchical structure, of course. And as I already tell, uh, told, like, longer the geo hash is the smaller the area, the higher precision. So I'll just show a small demo here. So this is uh, an open source project available, which is. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, which I just forked it and I'm using. So this is, I just searched for the Energy and Research Institute and uh, I say I wanted a level of 5 and I plot it. So it will tell me uh, that the particular, this is the center area. So the uh, so the place we searched was here. And this is the center, it will also tell the neighboring uh, geohashes. So if I increase the level and like try to go in and to bit more deeper. I am almost see the Energy and Research Institute is in the center box and these are the neighboring. Uh, as you can see like most of the uh, neighboring uh, geohashes have the common prefixes to the code. So uh, how did we get into this like Bangalore is TDR1 or Bangalore is TDR1 WX? So the process how it works is uh, you kind of keep dividing the map into smaller grids like horizontally and vertically uh, alternatively and uh, you keep going and zooming in. So this is the particular place that I've marked as a red point. You keep going and this is like a very big code that I get in binary and then just do a 32 bit encoding you get the uh, particular code. So geohash.org is one of the uh, reasons why this geohash system was made. 
it's uh, it's an uh, it was done by uh, the person who started this project and uh, through this geohash.org, when you say that geohash.org slash tdr1, it will directly take you to a map with uh, center as the particular geohash code and will also give you links to like OSM and Google Maps. So this is an easy means of uh, like if you want to um, have this full location in like emails or Twitter, so it's like a URL shortening for the entire latitude long node system. It becomes very easy to reference it in websites and so for example you can just say geohash.org tdr1 the meeting is there and uh, so because of the way that the geohash system is made the like grids with hierarchical system one major uh, advantage of that is uh, being able to easily group stuff so for example this particular address fourth main road domino stage it has this particular uh, geohash so imagine i just uh, remove the last three uh, this uh, geohash value. I go into a higher level precision which tells me like this is a domino level area. And I go even, uh, I remove a little bit more like four uh, strings, I reach at a ban Bangalore level and TDR1 is like the entire area like which is Malu, Bangar Petal, like all of that together. So this way it becomes very easy to group stuff. And uh, the, the make Sorry. And uh, so, uh, because of this, the way that hierarchically posted, uh, nearby searches or proximity search become uh, very easy because they usually have similar prefixes and long common prefixes uh, tend to be like two pla that two places are near. But there are uh, exceptional cases, the edge case, say like two places which are very near uh, in like Boston, uh, but at the third level division itself, they fall into two different buckets. So. Uh, and the code for that place starts with DRT for this DRM. So at that point itself, it doesn't come into the neighboring if you're doing a very simple string based uh, search. But there are, uh, I mean, the libraries that allow this geo uh, hashing and uh, um, give the ability to search for neighbors and the bounding box do handle these edge cases. So uh, again, just to um, understand uh, the coding part. So Terry is this particular big code. Uh, what I want everybody to notice here is like TDR1W is like common for Terry and Bangalore International Chapter, but CIS, which is like pretty close, has uh, TDR1Y. It's just because it's in another bucket. And our office, which is like actually on Indranagar 80 feet road, we and CIS like kind of share the initial file. So um, just have to and. Uh, so, if I didn't even know where Majestic is, I can still figure out like TDR1, so this Bangalore, Chennai, the only, uh, it's just the starting point which is similar, I mean common to Bangalore and something which is on the opposite side of the globe, it's a total different code. So, as a point. And, uh, so, uh, most of the languages have libraries uh, for accessing GeoH, like doing encoding, decoding, to find bounding boxes, to find nearby neighbors. So, uh, for example, bounding box, if I uh, give a particular geo hash and ask for the bounding uh, box, it will sorry, give me the lat long of the uh, all the corner points. And uh, if I do just a neighbors, it will tell me all the nearby uh, geo hashes. And if I do a expand, it will tell me all the neighbors, including the cell that I am talking about. And uh, uh, to find nearby places, uh, this entire system gives uh, two methods. One is proximity search, which is a bottoms up approach, and uh, the other one is the bounding box. So, uh, like if I have to search for, uh, if I imagine I have like a lot of points of interest around this area, and I want, I'm starting from that point, and I want to find like how much grids away that is. So, the proximity search is like I start at that point, and I keep increasing the uh, zoom level. Or, decreasing the proximity. So whenever there is some point which comes in the same geohash, I can like, okay, this is this level apart. So that's the bottoms up approach. The next one is, you keep expanding the bounding boxes. So you go like one level, then you go for each of those, you go the next level and do it. So it's just a choice, like which approach you want to follow. Uh, in uh, one of our products that we are building at uh, um, in our company, we uh, have a lot of points of interest, so like imagine I have the lat long of all these places and I want to like quick, 
quickly find out which is the other way, I mean, uh, nearby uh, points of interest. Uh, we used to have an approach which we, I mean, uh, kind of find the distances with Laclon, but it's not very efficient. Instead, we just uh, computed the geo hash values for all these given Laclons, and uh, while doing like a SQL query, we just do like a light thing because it also depends on the application context. If you're just looking at nearby proximity, what is near, it's not exactly for the distance computations. Also. So from this data set, if uh, from the data itself, I can identify like I search for uh, places near, points of interest near San Francisco and like this particular 928Y for all these places, at least 928 is uh, the common part. So, and uh, they are actually all nearby places. So you can either do like a uh, prefix match in a simple like query or you can do like a geo hash expand on the particular value and keep going until you find the uh, The major limitations are of course locality anomalies which is like uh, the bounding, I mean the edge cases. For that you have to handle them separately. And uh, so bounding box process itself will be a little bit more uh, computationally intensive. And uh, the projection based model, I mean initially Riju was talking in the morning of uh, these grids itself like uh, the difference in the grid sizes in the polar region and equatorial region. So that kind is, uh, will be a problem in this. Yeah, I mean the size itself will be different. Now uh, as a small demo I'll So this is like a mashup I did yesterday. So uh, these are like points of interest which is uh, relevant to our application and uh, imagine that we are trying to find something near Manhattan. So this is at the very the highest level of uh, precision that I am. So I increase the, this thing and do a fetch. Uh, it kind of zooms into the level where and uh, I mean uh, like from the research set it narrows down to the points which are at that particular level. Then I do further and keep doing. So, you yeah, are like it. So, you, you can build that into your algorithm where you say like till what level you want to go and like, so here I say like okay I have got, I, I just wanted to find like five points of interest which are near me. So, just give that and So, uh, that's it uh, basically. So, it's a simple and effective system to map complex lat long uh, into very easily computable uh, string and it's useful in applications where like nearness factor is more important than the actual distance or navigation so it depends on the application context uh, basically and uh, I mean it enables quiz with db access with like like and stuff which is very less for performance settings. Last bit is the important part because that actually puts the data in my script. Yeah. Uh, which you couldn't do it otherwise. Otherwise, yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, the code that I've used is on. Okay. Understand. So, any other encoding would also give the prefix, but it takes a long time. So, in this, uh, this thing, Works for both lat and long in one string. Let's take the examples that you use. 72 point something to and reduce it to like 2 decimal, 4 decimal. Right? Uh, see, how do you find 71 point something? If you're at yeah. 72.0, 71.9 is very close by. But you can't do that with the match anymore. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a string of pairs. No, but that problem is still existing. So it, it, yeah. It's much better than this. Performance wise in the application is better. So you take that 72 point example, that's a decimal. You convert it into 32 base or 36 base or whatever. Then it reduces. This problem again reduces. So that's exactly what this thing is. So my question, I mean, so any any uh, Encoding would likely give this. Why this and how useful? How widely spread is the, the thing is, this is about, it's a well accepted format. And uh, the useful thing with this is because that and long are interleaved. You know, so every alternate bit is flat and long. So, which means then that if you want to move from 72, 8 to 72.1, 8.1, 
you know, it's, it's very similar distance in terms of the actual hash. In fact, it effectively replaces uh, something called the KD trees at the back end. So, the two color uh, kind of thing. So, because you have two axes, uh, Neander's has to take both into account. That is where it was device back way. So, one the, uh, uh, along the vertical axis, uh, you compute left or right, that is a zero or one, and along the horizontal axis, you do uh, up or down, and then uh, it's MySQL has this geospatial engine, right? MySQL does not have as far as I can No, they, got, they just have one. Yes. Like, the yeah. Who are you using? It? It? Who are you using? It's it's awesome. Awesome. Huh? So, like, you know, open street map. Open street map. Yeah. the copy short link. It uses this. So, it does not make it custom link. Like, use Google, for instance. It makes a shortcut and saves it to the database where the shortcut that's ever made. In this case, it does not make it custom link. It just puts the hash. hash there. So, it will be osm.org slash hash. Yeah, I, I'm asking uh, which are companies something. That I'm not sure. Yeah. The, the bounding boxes that you showed, they are some, uh, they're fixed in some sense? Like no, no, uh, I mean, that depends on the length of the string itself. So, the more uh, the string length, the uh, smaller is the area. So, you are like zooming into that particular level. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, when you just say TDR1, it's at a very high level like Bangalore, Bangar, everything comes together in that. I have a uh, I have a problem that yeah. I want to solve. Um, if I have a, a, the lat long of uh, an MLA constituency in Bangalore, okay. with this, can I find the neighbors? Uh, like the exact um, the neighbors neighboring constituencies who share an edge with that constituency. Will I be able okay. to find something like that? Uh, I mean, so you can do an approximation. Sorry, if I can take this, uh, you can do an approximate neighborhood kind of thing. But since uh, the like, boundaries are not rectangular, yeah. you will not have a like, precise thing. Because you, if you have only one point for a constituency. But if, uh, I, if the zoom level so, is enough for oh. me to... But then that also is not constant, right? I mean, Bangalore may be a bigger district than like some other place. So. Basically, you can filter the data set and very effective numbers and then you work with the smaller set. Exactly. That's one thing, but the limitation will still be that the uh, it, it is rectangular. Right. So if your constituency is not close to a rectangular thing, uh, uh, unless you have uh, a lot of uh, grid points, in, instead of having just one point per constituency, if you had all the uh, smaller grid cells that define that constituency, in that case you could do that. So, yeah. so you can put those small points to form a bigger one. Sorry. Yeah, I can group those small thing. Exactly. If somebody <laughs> uses a polygon, but more than rectangular, it's not a problem of rectangular grid. It's a problem of the constituency boundary that's not existing in the data. Existing. Ah, that is that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It, it cannot find the name. Exactly. Just yeah. given one point. <laughs> exactly. So Just, that data is not here. So yeah. yeah. But then you have neighbors there, right? So you have one rectangle where your context is called situated. If you have another x, y, it could be there in the neighboring uh, type. Yeah. So if you just give 30 kilometers as one uh, radius, you can just get all of them, which may not be belonging to the current rectangle, but instead might belong to the other rectangles. So then you get all those constituencies or whatever your POI, which, which is in 30 kilometer radius. That's what I'm wondering if I can do. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, shape, and that shape right. is not in the data. If you just have x and y and x, x2, y2, it is a simple calculation. So that's what performance with the geo hashing, I'm not sure about that. Otherwise, when you go for it, it's a simple distance calculation. Two coordinates, two points you have, x1, y1, x2, y2, simple distance calculation. This works in India because you're uh, fairly close to the equator. Now, once you get really high up north or south, it stops working. Better. No, all the navigations, normally when the nearby surrounding this one works, only with this, this one. Geohashing is not used as far as I know. No, but if you have a, uh, uh, it's not for that. Yeah, it's not used for that. Yeah, it's right. The performance, when you have such a constraint, this is, yeah, so uh, no. one question. So, I think you're very bigger. I think you're very bigger. I think you're very bigger. Just take the maximum. Please take some. Uh, I can try it, of course. Yeah. Just, yeah. So, yeah, try it. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, something somewhat related to what she's asking. So, uh, this can be useful in proximity searches. You know, for example, I want to uh, search for like 
uh, some events within 10 miles of this particular zip code. Yeah. So, is there a decimal place to distance map? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. I mean, the library support that, like what precision you want, and while you encode the lat long itself, you can give that as an optional okay. argument. So, for example, uh, like up to five decimal places is like 100 kilometers, like uh, some seven decimal places. Like yeah, you, you can set the uh, precision level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. More questions?